to Essex Community Development. I'm Naomi Endelovu. And my name is Bianca. We are a voluntary community organisation based in Basildon, Pitsey, and we offer specialist coaching and mentoring services to troubled children, teenagers and families. Um, we um, tend to focus more on those families that are isolated, that perhaps um, have not engaged in the community and perhaps do not also understand about other services that are out there. Um, basically hard to reach families. That also includes children and young people that have behavioural difficulties in the school environment, which of course does normally affect their education attainment. So we offer one-to-one -one coaching and mentoring. The mentoring is for those aged 8 to 13 and the coaching is for the teenagers aged 14 to 19. So most of the interventions that we offer and by interventions I'm referring to early interventions are based within the community. schools and um, we have built um, a rapport with um, the, just the general community as well as the schools so sometimes we um, mentor not just on a one-to-one -one basis but we also meet the young people as a group and sometimes as a family and um, we also have um, design programs where instead of actually sitting down with them and just talking we take them out uh, some families actually have not been outside of Pitsy or outside um, of Essex or other areas so we organize trips and um, the last one we went to to the Lee Valley Farm, yes, and that was funded by Community First. Community First, and thank you to them because we reached quite a large number of families. And um, just to mention, we also had a, a double decker bus, so it was um, really packed and absolutely amazing. Um, we also engage with the young people through um, artistic activities, and we also do um, music days where they come out and try different types of instruments. And uh, hopefully, in the near future, we'll looking to engage them in sporting activities which is something we've tried out and they absolutely enjoyed that day I'm sure they did yeah. they did definitely and we also work with um, teenagers especially that lack skills for employment so what we do is we've just finished a project with the European Social Fund European it's the European uh, Social <laughs> Skills Funding and um, yes, it was quite an interesting project. And yes, uh, <laughs> and very successful as, at that. Absolutely. Because we have seen some of our young people, you know, completing that program and going to university. Absolutely. Whereas previously, before coming onto the program, they did not even feel they were confident enough or that they had the potential to get to university education. It felt like there was no hope for them whatsoever, but um, yeah, it, it's been really amazing because um, like Bianca's saying, quite a few are actually going to university and um, there's a few that came on board um, with perhaps learning difficulties like ADHD and some that could not read or write and we signposted them to other organisations and for some we managed to um, acquire some courses that they did online and they obviously have received their certificate so it's really been such a journey for them and um, I'm actually pleased that they can they prove to themselves that it is doable yes. and they can achieve and they can actually do it so yes. yeah so that's great. something that has also inspired some other young people that have been in a similar position. Having said that, it has actually inspired us as well <laughs> because, uh, you know, we always believe that um, everybody deserves a chance. Definitely. And sometimes, um, having said that statement, people that come through the door, um, 
you think, okay, where am I going to start with this person? But um, they find their way and um, the end result is pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right, Bianca and I um, founded Essex Community Development on the 29th of August of 2013. Um, it was a tough decision for us to make and we sort of both agreed that we cannot sit here you know and watch our community just go down the drain and watch the young people go down the drain because they are the future not of tomorrow but of today absolutely so um, we set up this organization and um, I must say we did face quite a few challenges at the conception stage in a terms lot. of um, resources that were required in order to carry out the activities that we needed to carry out. Mm -hmm. However, we did eventually, after about eight months, I think, mm -hmm. after about six to eight months, we did manage to get some funding to start off with um, parental workshops. That's right, yes. And um, as our first project, we did initially face some challenges mm -hmm. in um, obtaining or perhaps getting the people on board and, yes. and for them actually admitting that yes, we, we do need help and um, coming forward. We found that really um, difficult that we had a free service all paid for mm -hmm. uh, by the funders but um, nobody seemed to be coming forward. Yes. So we sort of had to change our strategy and we um, went on radio, that's one of the things that we did, we went live on radio and whilst we were there we were also offered a slot on radio which is a regular you know thing to come on board but we did not take that up however we still have that facility to go on radio as and when to you know talk about anything that we want to put out there. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think another thing that sort of um, gave us a breakthrough is that we um, went out to the shelters and we went out to the coffee mornings um, that are sort of um, held by local churches and small community groups. Mm -hmm. So that's how we sort of um, started talking to people. And um, it was quite easy that way because they got to know who we are. And I think a lot of people were concerned if we were the council or not. <laughs> yeah, I must so. say that quite a few people thought we worked in partnership with social services. So that's why some of the parents were quite reluctant to start attending the workshops. However, once the people did understand who we were and what we do, they were more than happy to come on board. Absolutely. Initially, they were absolutely terrified, intimidated, everything you can think about. Yes. So moving on from that project, we have had quite a few successes. And um, this includes the um, employability workshops that we carried out yes early on this year mm -hmm. and um, that was another huge success yes, because we had right. quite a huge number of people that responded to our adverts true yes and it was quite unfortunate that we had we could only take a limited number of people that's right yeah yeah but uh, yes, so far we have, um, you know, gone out there, built relationships with our local council. We've built relationships with the, the local CBS. Mm -hmm. So we are also part. Um, we, we we are part of the CBS, the local CBS in Basildon, and we are also part of a group called BBAC, which stands for um, Basildon Business Educational Consortium, which obviously takes care of uh, both. Um, the business and the educational side where the businesses pour in um, their knowledge, their skills into the schools and help the schools perhaps improve um, through, uh, I mean, attainment wise mm -hmm. and, you know, with the resources and buildings and things like that. So yes, we, we are actually pleased that um, we can put our hands up and say we do invest in education. So um, in the next month, um, having said that we are looking at starting our very first um homework club where you know it's starting off really small and um, in a school called pizza juniors it's recently just changed and um, it's now called um maple grove okay so um we will be getting um those 
perhaps requesting for children that are in year five and six um, we've got tutors in place and um, they will get more um, perhaps after school they will get more um, tutorials in maths and in English and once that works we want to take it to the next school and pick it again and the next and the next and the next and just help to improve attainment absolutely so tell me about um, the um, new projects that you're heading we have recently won a contract with Essex County Council and that is a, um, a two-year project mm -hmm. and on that we're working with South End YMCA yep. and that will be offering early intervention coaching and mentoring a tier one service to um, children, young people and their families as part of the Family Innovation Fund. Absolutely. Um, we partnered with South End YMCA and we sort of worked together. Obviously, they're the bigger organisation, so they place the bead. And uh, yeah, so we um, just started working with them and um, everything's going really well. We are actually covering a large area, which is the southeast of Essex. Um, Bianca is the team leader and I'm one of the coaches. So we thoroughly enjoy what we do and <laughs> we're definitely looking yes. forward to the future absolutely it, it you know it breaks our hearts just to you know come across um families or young people that have got nowhere to go because perhaps they've been turned away because they don't fit a certain criteria so we literally exist just to bridge that gap and um, bring hope to Pizzi. So yeah, thank you so much for steps and um, especially to Tom that we bother now and again. <laughs> so thank you so much. And also I'd like to say a big thank you to um, Tim to Socks um, who are actually behind the cameras right now. You <laughs> won't really see them. Uh, we did contact them, um, you know, a bit late, but um, they gave up everything they're so busy. I know their diary, they're absolutely booked up all the time. Mm. But um, they've come on board as one of our sponsors. We are so proud and we are really grateful. So team, you. and your team, <laughs> and the other team, because you've got two teams, as in thank your thank name, you T-I-M, and your team. <laughs> so thank you so much. You're mm. absolutely amazing. You have been patient with us throughout the day. And thank you. So talking about um, where we are and um, what the area is like, um, we've been filming today, we've gone round the area, uh, we're based in Broadway North, it used to be called but now it's called Broadway Chambers, it's easily accessible right within the hut of Pixie where the buzz is all going on and um, basically the area is um, class is a deprivative area and um, we have seen some good areas and some bad areas and there's a lot of regeneration going around in Pixie. can change um, whilst there's regeneration of um, the construction we will base everything on the regeneration of the mind and help people realize that they've got potential they can do it and you know the sky's the limit really
of our main beliefs is that everybody's got the potential, definitely, and that everyone deserves a fair, a fair chance in life, especially the children and young people of nowadays. They definitely do need the mentoring, they need the coaching, yeah. and um, they need to, have, to see that there are people out there that believe in them, that are dedicated to working with them and helping them to achieve their aspirations. Absolutely. And moving on, and um, we want to talk to you about why we joined the First Steps uh, program. Um, initially, we, we saw it online, and to be fair, <laughs> um, we didn't really understand it all. We were not interested, and we just put it aside. But um, having joined the program, it's um, been really great because. Um, it is to do with the action com um, community action plan. Am I right? That's correct. So we thought since we deal more with the youth, we would rather do a um, youth community action plan. And in that sense, we have been out there talking to young people and you know, so many times, I mean, we're both parents, aren't we? And um, sometimes I'm sure you find yourself, you, you speak on behalf of your children a lot. Yes. Yeah, and I'll do the same. But we want to hear what the young people have to say for themselves because they've got other voices speaking on their behalf. They've got the parents, they've got the aunties, they've got the uncles, they've got the teachers, they've got the head of school, they've got the head of departments. Yes, it seems everybody else is talking about the young people, what the people, what the young people don't have, what the young people need. So it is actually quite interesting, you know, it's something that we are quite curious about to find out what the young people are saying how they feel about their current living environment what they feel is lacking and what they feel they need absolutely we will be focusing on on areas of um, safety around the community around their home around the school we will be focusing around um, finding out exactly what they can do to thrive um, in the community, what they can do to, to have a better future and, and what their overview is and what their perspect perspective is um, rather than from our side of, you know, things and or their parents' perspective. So, yeah. I think that this programme will definitely go a long way towards um, enabling us to gather the evidence moving mm -hmm. forward because what we plan to do after this community action plan is to go and obtain funding to um, carry out the activities that the young people say they need. Absolutely. So this will help us to gather that evidence and to put uh, I mean, to the, the funders. The Absolutely. The, the, the key thing for us here is that um, we're now hearing directly from the young people. Absolutely. You know, it's quite um, a large scale project for us because we will be interviewing um, across Pitsy. But again, some of the children that live in Pitsy do go to schools outside of Pitsy. So we will, you know, do our utmost best to find where they are in the schools and we will obviously complete surveys and hopefully we're aiming at about four to five thousand people taking part yes I think that's um, a reasonable size that will also enable us not to generalize mm. the information or the results of the consultations that we have done with the children and the young people it is um, quite a lot of work I must say uh, because we have to deploy stuff we have to deploy IT we have to deploy um, volunteers to, to sort of um, help through because at the end of the survey we, we then have to get you know qualified information so each and every paper has to be vetted and the results have to be logged so yes. it is going to be um, quite intensive yes that's correct and um, we will also be um, employing the services of our youth ambassadors mm -hmm. because as the youth ambassadors, they will definitely be going out there and speaking to their peers and getting more information about what they think and how they feel and what they believe is needed in the community. One thing that's really broke my heart today is um, I found out through an interview as we were driving around, uh, one parent just mentioned in passing that um, the area may not necessarily be safe um, not because we've got murderers in the area, but because we've got a lot of young people that have got so much time 
to themselves where they're not engaging in meaningful activities and as a result um, a few um, stabbings have been reported and they've all been carried out by young people mm -hmm. and um, the latest I heard was a 13 year old that has been stabbed and that is has really got to stop so you know we have to work hard and um, you know perhaps consult with other organizations and find out what they're doing to stop all this happening because we cannot accept that coming into the area absolutely absolutely I have um, actually personally witnessed quite a few of these um, teenagers about early teens you know walking around the streets hanging around street corners odd hours of the night and I feel they do really need something to keep them occupied Absolutely. so that they don't end up getting and caught it, up and in all that. You know, definitely got to do with self worth because if you know um, what you're worth, then you would sort of, um, you know, do things that are worth doing and you understand who you are and Absolutely. your values and, and things like that. So we need to reinstall those values back into the community yes. and perhaps get like the um, elderly involved as well, perhaps the pensioners or those that have retired mm. um, or Absolutely. those that are in early retirement. Absolutely. So, uh, so far at this stage of the programme, we have uh, managed to have one meeting with our relationship manager and that is Keith Brown mm -hmm. and um, we will be having a second meeting before we submit this blog yep. I believe yes that's right yeah and um, we have at that meeting we did speak to him about the training that's on offer mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. and so far we've attended one I believe there's three other meetings yes, that we need right. to attend. Yes, um, I'm attending one on the 18th of September okay so I really look forward to that but um, having said that can you tell me more about the meeting that you attended the training please? The training that I attended um, was to do about was to do with public consultation right okay. so we had a look at different ways of carrying out a public consultation mm -hmm. we had a look at the safety aspect we had a look at um, how to identify the necessary resources and right. how to get volunteers on board mm -hmm. and how to um, assess that public consultation right so that was quite quite useful information brilliant um, I know you've shown me the notes I've gone through them all and uh, I just have to you know <laughs> keep up with the speed because there's yes. just you know so much to grasp and uh, so much Absolutely. to remember but again um, we're really grateful to first steps because um, without you putting out programs like these you know um, we cannot move forward so we do need the resources and, and the information to move forward and I um, also want to take this time, obviously on behalf of myself, Bianca, and everybody here at Essex Community Development mm -hmm. to thank um, Keith Brown because he's really been key. Um, always communicating, always checking how we are, where Absolutely. we are. So he's definitely a worthy manager. <laughs> he is, and yeah. I must also add to what you said. He has given us contact details of other organizations in the area strangely very local and he you know he's quite miles away from here so yes so he's those done are his research really well definitely and those are organizations that we will be working in partnership with mm -hmm. on future projects absolutely so in terms of starting the activities in, um, within the locality I think we've already touched on that so that's um, on um, that's rounding up her uh, question too from Essex Community Development. Um, we're filming around the area today and also focusing mainly on young people. Um, we just want to know what young people like, uh, what they'd like to have in the area, what facilities and things like that. And just to hear the voice really. So as um, a parent really, what, what's your thoughts? 
Um, my thoughts is there is not many places for the youngsters to go. Um, I live just off of Felmore's estate. Right. Um, there is no youth clubs of such. We have a community centre there, mm -hmm. but in the three years I've been here, I've never seen it open. Right. Um, and I generally think there needs to be more clubs for the youngsters, not just kids, like mm -hmm. under 10 years. Yeah. Something for in between those ages. Right. There just doesn't seem to be anything around. <laughs> There's no um, real facilities for those people. I mean, I've seen a thing for Buzzard High Street mm -hmm. and they do hang around it. Yeah. What for? We what don't for? Know. Absolutely, because they could, you know, engage in meaningful activities yeah. perhaps. So, have you got any examples of perhaps what you think would help them to get more focused, more engaged, and. Um, I make use of the community centre like you're saying it's there but it's not in use yeah I think they need like mentors they need right you know people there to show them the way you know what I mean they need mentoring they need you know somebody like an adult just yes. to sort of like get them focused get them interested in different mm -hmm. stuff I mean mm -hmm. we've had um, problems around that neighbourhood for so long now and it's mm -hmm. just I just think mentoring, things like mentoring. that. Mentoring, yeah, absolutely. Which is where we come in because we um, just formed not too long ago. Our focus and aim is to coach and mentor young people. So we're literally trying to get in the areas at the moment, and obviously um, knowing um, families, knowing the young people, um, finding out what they like. And um, in the next two weeks, um, we will be sending out surveys through the schools and hopefully we will be out there knocking at your doors <laughs> Excellent. <That is laughs> you know mean. asking you to give us these ideas so we can put them together and not just do what we want but do what the people want no, exactly. so that's exactly what we're all about and that's why we're filming today so I really appreciate your help and would you mind telling us who you are yeah my name's Emma okay <laughs> lovely um, I live in Pitsy <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking part in this um, documentary. We're really pleased to hear all your views and we'll certainly take them on board. Thank you. Lovely. <laughs>
anything. So no. you're just homeschool, homeschool, homeschool. Yeah. Come on, get a life. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you're you're so intelligent, you're so clever, and you know sometimes people think, oh, nothing good can come out of Pixie or Basildon and things like that. But um, having met you, having met your family, um, you're just amazing. And I know that you've um, taken part in some of the projects that um, Essex Community runs. So that's how we sort of have that relationship so tell me more about yourself i know you've had some major achievements in the um, past really i'm a youth counsellor mm -hmm. i'm a young carer mm -hmm. and i won the young volunteer last year i know you did that was uh, like pretty major wasn't it mm, i won this year a diana award for anti-bullying champions wow and um, basically I just like to get involved. Wow, that is amazing. So how do you find time and, you know, get involved with um, all these different things? Really, just I uh, seem to have a lot of spare time. Mm -hmm. like, so when I'm not doing stuff, I just try and get as much involvement as possible. And you're more into um, helping people, really, which is absolutely brilliant at your age. And how old are you, Daisy? 13. Wow. <laughs> it's just amazing, isn't it? Oh, I think you're such a pioneer and you're such a, an example to so many people, even the adults. And um, having spoken to your parents, they're really proud. So would you like to tell us more about what you understand about Essex community, bearing in mind you will be part of the um, young board members going forward, which um, I really look forward to, to working with you. Yeah. Basically they're just a service that helps people really, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they do as much as possible as they can. Like they run youth groups to try and keep like less uh, crimes and all that and really they're just good people. Yeah, so around Pixie area what are your views about young people? What do you think can be done to improve their lives? Really more like showing off that there is stuff out there and there is things that they can do instead of just moping around staying at home. Mm. So for example, for example there could be music workshops, there's mm -hmm. so many youth groups it's too, there's too many to name. We've got, uh, there's the youth council. Mm -hmm. There's uh, quite a lot to do nowadays. Do you know how they can get involved in um, such uh, activities? Word of mouth. You can find it through the internet. Ask people that actually go to them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of ways, really. That's brilliant. I know you're only 13 and, and you've done so much. What do you aspire to do in the future? I want to be a doctor. Wow! <laughs> that is proper huge! Mm. I'm fascinated with playing the guitar. Are you yeah. now? Right. I've been playing since I was five. Wow. You're very fun. Wow, that's amazing. Jamie, how are you Jamie? I'm good. I'm Naomi. How's been your day so far? It's been good. Yeah, that's lovely. Which school do you go to? I go to the Bandon Academy. That's lovely. How old are you? I'm in year 11. So I'm year 15. 11. Okay, that's lovely. And what are your favourite subjects? Favourite subjects are probably PE and business studies. Oh, fantastic. So what do you hope to be when you're older? A paleontologist. That's really good. I just wanted to find out for yourselves how you feel about the area, um, how perhaps you can, um, we can help as an organisation or how any other organisation can chip in to provide um, services for young people like yourselves. Um, well, it can be fun. I like to go to parks quite often and whenever I go to one it's 
usually quite littered up. Oh right, so it's to do with the litter really and um, do you get to use the facilities outside of the litter? Um, yeah, I do use them. Right, so. okay. Do you play sport? Um, I play football for my school team. Oh, that's fantastic. Hello, my name is Jade, member of the Essex Community Development and I'd like to tell you about what we've been doing to help improve the community, especially involving you. <laughs> okay, so how are you Jade today? Good? Very good, thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, firstly, I'd like to um, thank you so much for all the help um, and your contribution within um, Essex Community Development. Um, Jade is one of um, our Young Bod members. We're very proud to have her and it's such a privilege to work with her. Um, she can be very shy, but she's absolutely creative and she, you know, helps us, guides us and tells us a lot more about um, what young people like and she tells us about her involvement in the school and um, you're in business, Jade, aren't you? Yeah. So tell us about your achievements in that area. Uh, well, I participated in the Young Enterprise project um, where we had to create our own business. Um, so I think we were selling uh, white, like kind of recycled products. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to sell them in fair trade, um, in trade fairs, and things like that in shopping centres and everything. Um, we went to trade fairs and we won a few awards, like. Um, we won best trade stand, uh, we won best overall company in the area finals once. Um, so that was a, a really big kind of achievement for us as well. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And um, when we're talking about business, we're not talking about um, something that you're just doing at school because as far as I'm aware, this is a registered business and you have got shares in that business, is that right? Yes. Um, recently I caught a glimpse of your photograph on the newspaper. My understanding is that you sort of gave up some of your shares and gave them to charity, is that right? You donated? Uh, yes, we did. Um, we donated over £100 to um, the physically handicapped um, charity in the Canby um, at the end of our year um, after we'd like, finished the business year. So. That's fantastic. And recently, um, you and I have sat down and um, have been working towards the um, Youth um, Community Action Plan, and it, it was quite in intensive. And obviously, you did a lot of thinking, you did a lot of typing. So, some of the things that you put down was to think about the venue where we are actually going to have the large scale youth day. I'm still looking into that. So, <laughs> uh, in case you want to check on me in front to the camera I haven't done anything so far but I will be after the filming okay and we also spoke about um, going out into the schools and um, doing surveys and, and what were your thoughts on that? Um, yeah I thought it was a very good idea to kind of grasp the perspective of other youth on like you know the community and everything um, and then what they thought about you know what they were experiencing in school and everything so I thought it was a very good idea I contributed to some of that as well so yeah okay that's wonderful and uh, I'm sure you will be proud obviously with the finished product so um how old are you Jay? I know I, I, I ate a massive cake and we still have some for Tim in the <laughs> office uh, you just had a birthday didn't you yeah I just Oh, thank you for the cake. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm sorry I can't share it with everybody watching. <laughs> you turned 16. Yeah. Golden age. So, um, tell me about how you would uh, sort of encourage other young people sort of come out of their shell and be part of something within the community. Um, just to get involved in whatever you can, really. I mean, whatever in, you know, interests you, whether it's, I mean, clubs or anything you can just always get involved and um, that itself can kind of like make a change um, you know wherever really. I mean what I've found is that um, the more I work with uh, people like yourselves and, and, and more of the young people that we've spoken to today is that um, I find that you guys are not just making contributions but I find um, a bit of maturity in you you know along as we work together I find that you guys are growing not just in strength you're growing in ideas you're growing in you know obviously in stature <laughs> 
but um, I find that your confidence is really coming up and um, one day you know I want to be able to to hand over Essex community development to, to people like yourselves to, to run the, the business because um, we're, it's not about us it, it's about the people it's about the community so that's what we're here for yeah how are you today good good yeah lovely you look very smart Brilliant. How old are you? Eleven. Wow. And what school do you go to? Afton. And what do you leave? Do you leave around here at I all? I live in Pixie. You live in Pixie. Okay. What's your general of overview um, about the area? Um, do you take part in activities perhaps? Or? Um, not really. Not really. So there's not a lot. There's not a lot. So tell me, um, what would you like to see happen around this area? Um, what communities do you think will obviously help for you to then take part in different things? Uh, community clubs and stuff like that. Um, anything specific maybe? Um, maybe some football clubs, some, football clubs. Art from, uh, some karate clubs and stuff like and that. Clubs. Okay. And do you know there was just um, some really cool over there but obviously yeah. that's been taken down. Did you take part in that at yeah. all? So you haven't got access to swimming anymore? No, so we have to go to um, Basildon Sporting Village. Is yeah. that easily accessible? Not really. Not really, so swimming is one of the key things for you. Yeah. Perhaps. Okay, that's brilliant. So when you grow up, what would you like to be? Have you thought about that? Not really. <laughs> so you told me you're 11, so that tells me you're year 7, am I right? Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time and I, I wish you uh, the very best in your journey in high school and thank you for taking time to talk to us today. Thank you. Lovely. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks, bye. We're in the hut of Pizza today. As you can see, it's buzzing and we have got Morrison's building right behind us. And yeah, this is Pizza basically. And um, I am actually pleased that we haven't got actually not just bad reports, but we've got good reports. As you've heard different testimonies from different children. So I'm with Tabo today. Uh, from uh, Pitsy, am I right Tabo? Yeah. Yeah, lovely. So what can you tell me about yourself? Because I can see all this athletic, football, basketball, languages, cross country. Fantastic. Well, I just enjoy playing sports. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about your uh, biggest achievement lately and what was that? Um, I was given the Sportsman of the Year award. Wow. Well. So you you definitely deserved that, didn't you? So, yeah, a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. Um, I know you're quite passionate about, you know, sports and um, what do you do? Tell us more about your sporting activities. Um, I love a range of sports. Only sport I'm not really good at is swimming. But I play football. I play for Concord Rangers. I train on Tuesdays and Saturdays and I have games on Sundays, sometimes during the week. I also play basketball, rugby and loads of other sports. It's quite interesting you say that because I've heard that your teachers are actually confused as to, you know, so, so some sports can't run on the same day because you're the key men across the board. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so they literally have to campaign to ensure that not every sport runs on the same day or at the same time because otherwise they won't have good results if you're not in there. How amazing is that? So what can you tell um, other young people about, you know, taking part in sports? Um, so if you love sports, just go and take part. The only way you can get better is you practice practice hard then you see results it should be good for you that's definitely amazing Tabo I'm really pleased for you and um, what can you tell us about the area since you leave in Pixie um, Pixie is a lovely area is that there's a few things for our youth to do there are parks there are courts pitches there's um, places to play sports we've got lots of food stops lots of shops everything is easy access 
that's quite interesting you say that you sound like you've got loads of money so where do you actually spend your money <laughs> talking about all these good places you know food sports and and all of that uh, sometimes I like to take a trip to KFC Wow <laughs> yeah. is that what you do after school then yeah. Right, okay, that's fantastic. So how would you encourage um, other young people perhaps that don't even perhaps take part in sport, don't take part in other activities, don't realise the potential they have inbuilt within them to actually excel in these areas. Talking of which, I was really inspired um, just the week gone, I was watching the Kenyan um, athlete that was throwing the javelin and here's a YouTube athlete, he just saw it on YouTube and he sort of uh, taught himself and I thought that was amazing and it, it, it then again reminded me of young people that are just lying dormant with the embedded talent that perhaps they haven't really tapped into. So how would you encourage somebody that really doesn't go out, that cannot be bothered, that thinks well I don't have to take part in this? Well I think some people believe that they're not good enough then you won't know you're not good enough until you try. See, see something you like, you get better at it, you polish on your skills, and then you'll become big, you'll become something great. Right, so what you're saying to me is identify perhaps what you can do, find out more about it, try it out, and keep trying. Yeah. Yeah, up until you get, you know, good results, basically. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, um, this was Tavo. He's one of our um, Essex Community Development members, board members, by the way. Um, these guys are going places. Um, I'm in the process of entrusting him with our sports um, agenda so he can run it for us and encourage other young people because my understanding is that we I mean I'm a tennis player and uh, I ensure that I play tennis at least once or twice a week and I run okay so whether you're going to beat me in that I don't know but I, what I do know is that I can run <laughs> Not tennis, <laughs> tennis is a must <laughs> Right, so we'll go to the trek, you and I, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, as I was saying, um, I think, you know, having people like yourselves in the team really moulds us and I believe that um, we, we will capture a lot of young people that perhaps do not realise that they've got a huge potential in um, getting involved in different areas of life and uh, yeah, great.